Photography Daily. Street photography to me is not really a term, it's a feeling. Street photography is a, for me, is the way to unwind. Today, Golnara Samoylova, a photojournalist, a documentarian, a street photographer, now an editor with a Wednesday photo story edition about a new book featuring 100 women street photographers. You know, I when I curated this book, I wanted to show photography that I personally emotionally connected. Women street photographers, the book. We find out how those that are featured in it were chosen and we talk about the accompanying Instagram that's been a runaway success. And then I start posting those photographs. Then I thought, well, I need to provide value to uh, followers. So uh, I started writing, you know, why I like this photo. We talk about personal inspirations and how a meeting with the legendary Mary Ellen Mark changed Galnada's thinking and her future. And when she said, you know, you owe it to yourself to work on my own photography, I took it as a um, call for action. We we also talk about Golnada's World Press Photo Award that she received for her coverage of 9-11. She'd been in and out of one of the towers as it burned from above and found herself much closer to the collapse of the second tower than she'd planned. When the building collapsed, I I thought I, I, I died. You know, I mean, I, it was so dark. I was out of air. I mean... I, I, I didn't think I'd die. I thought I was buried alive. And we also talk about being a photographer, opportunities, and being out there on the streets with your camera. That's what I wanted to show with this book, that you can uh, be creative regardless where you live, regardless of what camera you have. You can do this. Stories of life told by photographers. And today that photographer is Golnada Samoylova. Patron of the day today is Rob M, going by the title he uses on his two Instagram accounts, or Rob Merkestein. On this outing, Rob, I'm going with your amazing grid of buildings, shadows, textures and patterns and colours. And I have to say that you've inspired me to look more at shapes next time I'm out with a camera. Simplicity in observation. I love it. I promise you, follow this link that I'll leave on the show page, grab a coffee and spend a little time with each image. It's Rob M uh, underscore photography underscore. But I'll leave a link. I also revel, by the way, in your humour, in particular the urban street shot where you had uh, well, the barbed wire that spreads right across, up and down and over the top of a steel bar's gate, which you title as the subtle art of saying piss off. And I suppose it is, really. All patrons get the opportunity to join in with Patron of the Day now, so for the price of a cup of coffee per month at your favourite high street coffee joint, you can be spreading the word about your sites and Insta, and you also get to hear the extra two diary shows on the Patreon app. And tomorrow, I'm going to share my latest documentary photography experience of photographing a funeral. And whilst I understand that's not for everyone and I get the squeamishness attached, I have to say it presented some really interesting and important reportage challenges, some lessons and some resolutions. I want to share that experience with you, our patrons, tomorrow. We're also supported by mpb.com, who help you buy, sell and trade used camera gear in the US, the UK and Europe. And here's two reasons why you can trust them for your picture making. One, peace of mind when you're buying in the form of a guarantee and two money in your bank quickly when you sell so if you want to buy sell or trade used camera gear and be part of the ever important circular economy go to mpb.com which is a great place to do business so to today's guest golnada samoylova is a fine art photographer with a documentary eye and a passion for street photography Moving from the Republic of Bashkortostan in 1992, she set up a base in New York City. As you heard in the introduction, she was present on the day the Twin Towers fell, for which she won a series of photographic awards for her coverage. But it was in 2012, while on assignment in China, she became more serious about street photography. I'll link to her site, and you'll find a, a myriad of countries have been the focus of her lens where she's explored the issues of air pollution, AIDS and the neglected elderly. And she now champions the art and photography of women street photographers, which is recognised by the 
successful Instagram account of the same name, countless international exhibitions, and this, a book that highlights the work of many of the best contemporary women street photographers internationally. We'll be introduced to a few names, and over the coming months, I'll be talking personally with some of those featured in Longer Conversation. The book is now available through Prestel. This is Gulnada Samoylova. Women street photographers. I, I suppose the first and most patently obvious question is how on earth did you decide who was going to be included in this? It wasn't actually that bad. You know, I started with the... Uh, uh, 250, about 250 photographers right. uh, whose work I curated through about uh, 10 exhibitions uh, at the time. And also the photographers that I featured on Instagram, women's street photographers. So I already was familiar with their work. And uh, what I do is that with each exhibition, uh, the way I curate, I make a little uh, four by f uh, six inches uh, proof prints which I mount on the wall. Mm -hmm. And so I already had those proof prints. And when uh, Prestel called and um, offered me a uh, book deal, uh, so I basically I already have, had the book in hands, uh, meaning that I already had that thought uh, to publish a book uh, from the very, very beginning of uh, Women's Street Photographers. But there are some very established names in there. Uh, I noticed Suzanne Stein in there, actually, who, who's uh, featured on this show, and she doesn't live too far away from you, does she? But it, but equally, there are some that uh, are much newer to the genre, aren't there? So, yes. Uh, well, first of all, I wanted to feature uh, women who are dedicated photographers, and not necessarily in street photography, because uh, we, and I consider myself as well, you know, we do street photography, but we do also, you know, we're photojournalists, we're documentary photographers, we're fine art photographers. But I wanted to find work of women who are dedicated to photography. So, yeah, there are a couple of uh, uh, very established names and uh, uh, a lot of them emerging photographers or photographers who were never published in, uh, uh, in books. Finding the, the street genre's names and, and those to observe in the West, in the States, in Europe and Australia is one thing. Researching those in, um, uh, for example, uh, Tehran, like uh, Farnaz Dam Nabi's work uh, about women's feelings, or um, Neta Gov in, in Israel. How, how did you go about making sure that photographers worldwide in places where street photography is not so much a medium associated with women, um, how, how did you ensure that was covered as well? Uh, again, from beginning uh, of women street photographers, I wanted to make sure that I feature women from all places in the world. And I noticed uh, from uh, for a while, for uh, for example, Iranian women photographers are not uh, featured as much. Uh, it, I think it's because of uh, embargoes, like U.S. embargoes or other countries' embargoes. So the the photographers have they don't have that the same opportunity to send their photos for contests uh, or exhibitions because they there's they can't let's say pay for you know, exhibition submissions. And so what I do is with every exhibition, I have free entry to women who cannot afford, uh, first of all, who cannot afford submission fee, and uh, women who live in countries uh, affected by embargoes like Iran or mm. Cuba. And uh, for me, it's very, very important uh, to be inclusive uh, regardless of political situation, let's say, or financial situation. Well, I, I was looking at Netta's picture in, in the book. It's wonderfully clever, play on perspective, with a, a very witty picture of a, a man who seemingly is allowing a flow of tiny birds to fall from his tipped hat. I'm sure you know, know the picture. And the hat's obscuring his face on, on the left-hand side of his face. And it's actually made partly because, for religious reasons, he's not allowed to look at her. And, and I wonder whether this brings a a degree of intrigue about the world. I don't mind saying it, ra rather traditional dictates that couldn't actually be captured as well by a man for, for obvious reasons. Where, whether that actually helps some of the women within the book achieve pictures that I perhaps couldn't. Well, it creates a very interesting and unique perspective. Uh, you know, we women... Um, and again, you know, I'm considering, uh, I'm including myself uh, because I've been a photographer for 40 years. 
you know, we women have sometimes most, you know, sometimes we have a unique um, circumstances. So I think uh, that gives us advantage of being a uh, braver let's say to take photos so how did you start to curate the the project then what what was the criteria if you like for inclusion because this features established alongside new photographers it's it's very democratic you know i when i curated this book i wanted to show photography that i personally emotionally connected so there are photographs for example photographs by uh natalia grigorashvili I just, you know, it's one of my favorite photographs in the book Mm. where I connected on my emotional level to that photo because I saw something from my childhood. And and this is a photograph of a of a a young girl and her older sister and her mother uh, holding a headscarf. Oh yeah, but I know it. yes, and that the, the the pose of the girl. I just saw myself, you know. I saw myself when I was like twelve or thirteen, yeah. because I have a photograph uh, uh, quite similar. Um, the, you know, the, the way I was standing uh, in that photograph, and I remember uh, the how I took that photo. You know, I I made my hair myself, and I put a dress and shoes, and I marched into the photography studio. <laughs> And I remember a photographer asked me to smile. But when I received the photograph, I was dead serious. And I'm like, I, I did smile. What happened? And I realized that I smiled it in my head. But from outside, I was just like serious, you know, 13-year-old girl. So in this photograph, I saw that similar, you know, that the girl, she didn't really smile. But it was, it was a celebration yeah. of her you know, I love that photo very much. I'm also uh, very drawn uh, to Iranian photographs just because they're like so poetic. Mm. You know, they're just so thoughtful. There's soul in those photographs. Well, while, while you're talking of um, poetic pictures, it's right at the end. But uh, Bruna Ratuna um, took a, a fabulous picture, which which you chose. It's the one of the the girl that's jumped into uh, a swimming pool at a, a villa, and it's raining. And the look on her face as she's enjoying the pool and just I don't know eating the rainfall. There's almost a a dreamlike quality to the photograph and a, and a simplicity. Pool, rain, and uh, utter well as, as Bruna says herself, utter magic. Yeah, I love dreamy photographs. I just I love photographs that takes me to the place where I can dream, you know, and be innocent. So this is this is a photo, uh, also one of my favorite, and that's why I put it as a last photo, just to to end this uh, this book as allowing us to dream mm. and uh, yeah, dream on. How did, how did you select the order? Because it, it's not done by um, order of experience. It's not done by alphabetical order. It's not done by countries or zones or cultures how, how did you uh, how did you choose the order uh, exactly so the way i uh, curate uh, i did i curate this book the way i curate exhibition which i would like uh, when i curate exhibitions what i do is i pair photographs mm. uh, so there is a connection between photographs it could be emotion um, a uh, visual connection, I would say. It could be anything that, uh, you know, it could be color or uh, subject matter or uh, shape uh, or whatever that is. It needs to be a connection. And this book, I wanted to curate the same way. So when the viewer is going through, the flipping through the book, so there is a subtle connection between oh, picture to picture uh, photographs yes so uh, that's why i didn't want uh I, I wanted my viewers to be surprised when they turn the page and i didn't want them to expect that okay this is an alphabetical order or it's a by country so yeah that that's that's uh you know it could be silhouette or animals this is what i feel this is the feedback i get every time i curate exhibition is uh i get this like this exhibition is flowing, and and this is what I wanted to um, to achieve when uh, when the viewer looking through a book yeah. that they they just flip through and maybe they don't realize what it is like like you. I didn't know, but it made sense. It does make you sense, you know. And pe- people people uh, know that okay, I like this book. They, I don't know why I like this book, but I like it yeah. because it's surprising. 
There's an article at the um, the head of the book by Melissa Breyer, the, the New York street photographer, where she unpicks the medium of street photography and in particular the role women have played in it. Let's talk about street for a moment um, and the definition really of it. As a, as a street, now I know you, you're a fine art photographer um, and, and you make portraits and you're a photojournalist, but as a, as a street photographer, how do you see it? What, what does the term mean to you? Street photography to me is not really a term, it's a feeling. Street photography is a, for me, is a way to unwind. So that's why I, so, I appreciate so much a different genre within street photography. Mm. Like when I, I had no idea before I found street, uh, women street photographers, I had no idea that there's a street abstract, you know, like a work uh, by Linda Hacker. She's a, she does street abstracts yeah. and they're just fabulous. I am a huge fan of it. I, I personally don't do uh, abstract but I'm very inspired by her work just because it's different. Uh, Olga Karlovac, uh, her photographs are blurry, dark, uh, moody, and, you know, they're kind of like a borderline between, like, fine art, but I, I consider it street photography. And the other thing, like, I don't want to define street photography per se. I think it should be free of any definition. I, I, I don't want people to like, okay, street photography only uh, taking in the street of, um, you know, metropolitan city. No. If you live in a small village uh, in the middle of India and you have a phone and you go outside of your home on a dirt road and you're taking pictures, in my opinion, mm. it is a street photography. Mm. There, there, there's a number of firsts mentioned within the book, not, not least being Margaret Bork White, who, um, who 91 years ago, became the first professional photographer from the West allowed into the Soviet Union. I wonder who the, who the women who've inspired you are. So I, um, there's a couple of women who inspired me very much. When I moved to uh, New York in 1992, I came across uh, a work by Helen Levitt, and I immediately just loved her photos so much. Yeah. I couldn't afford her photos. And I, uh, I was gifted by a first edition uh, book of hers. And I remember I asked the, uh, the, her gallery, uh, the gallery who was representing her, uh, if I could see Helen and so she can sign me the book. And it was a highlight of my life. <laughs> so I, I just, I, you know, I still have that book. Another uh, a woman uh, who completely changed my life was Marilyn Mark, who mm. uh, at uh, first I met her in uh, mid-90s at her exhibition opening, and um, I bought her book, and she signed it for me. And then uh, later on, I took her last workshop uh, in New York, wow. and it was, uh, it was uh, life-changing uh, in terms of she, after the workshop, uh, she sent me a letter, actually, uh, a, a big letter where she encouraged me. Uh, and the, 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 the words, the phrase she used, you own it to yourself to continue to produce your own body of work. Uh, because at the time, I had a very successful um, wedding photography business, and I was very, very busy. And But I did street photography to for fun. And when she said, you know, you owe it to yourself to work on my own photography, I took it as a um, call for action. We, I mean, every person, I assume, uh, goes through a period of time where uh, they're, you know, have, you know, they have doubts in their self-confidence or if they're, you know, question their photography abilities or you know so I, I was going through the, the same same things you know I was very uh, I was uh, you know my confidence uh, wasn't as, as, as strong and receiving that letter was transformational for me because she assured me yeah. that I should continue that I have talent I have the ability and I should focus on something that I've been passionate for almost 40 years so it's really, really changed my, my, my life and gave me the strength and motivation to do what I'm doing. And when I curated my first exhibition, Women's Street Photographers, uh, in New York City in 2018, 
I dedicated that exhibition to the memory of Mary Ellen Mark. Wow. And I, ha I have a, a printout of that letter, which, uh, you know, hang, like I'm, I'm look, I, I read that letter all the time. So I folded that letter and put it in the pocket and during the opening. Um, and I was just, I was so proud of what I did, you know, that I, I put together work of 75 women photographers. And I had that letter in the pocket. And I, I knew that she would be so proud of me as well. Mm. It just made me, it still made me, makes me so emotional. <laughs> Back with Gulnada in a moment. Photography Daily launched on the 1st of June 2020. It's not long to go, one year. In the last year, we've spoken with photo legends, talked about photographers' personal stories, heard about their journeys, shared what picture making means, made sure to talk about mental health and inclusivity during hundreds of hours of audio. And that bank of knowledge and resource will just keep building if you're able to support the show with a small donation per month, because that is what keeps this project afloat. Some patrons donate the cost of a coffee, some the coffee and cake, and others the cost of a, a couple of rolls of HP5, my favourite film stock per month. And because I value those that show their passion for this project, I make sure to write and present two diary pieces per week on a Tuesday and Thursday about all manner of photographic stuff, including this month the start of a book club, new for me. Well, you can join our wonderful photography club and support the show by going to photographydaily.show and clicking the Patreon app. And once you've done that, it's easy to hear the additional stuff through a new app on your phone or on your desktop. But most importantly, you're supporting the creative world and becoming part of our community. And just before we return to Golnada, a word about Fundy Designer, which the world's most successful wedding and portrait photographers use. Why? Well, it helps them double their revenue without shooting more. So get the leading software used by the world's most profitable photographers for designing and selling your albums, and your wall art collections, cards and studio magazines and more. You can download the free trial or save an extra 25% with the discount code, which is Photography Daily. Right, back to Gonada Samoylova. We were talking about women street photographers, the the exhibitions, and if you if you want more details to see these, we'll share a link on the show page. But it's uh, it's easy to find just by going to womenstreetphotographers.com. Um, you're making calls, Gonada, at the moment for exhibitions in Europe and Kuala Lumpur, as you say on the website. Be inspired, be empowered, and that was a a wonderful story just now about uh, Mary Ellen Mark, who empowered you. But it, it seems to me with with your work curating these exhibitions, editing this book and heading up the Instagram to talk to women street photographers, that in, that in many respects you're now providing that empowerment yourself and you're, you're paying it forward. Oh, yes, indeed. Indeed. I mean, the, everything I do right now is uh, to give the opportunities to any woman from anywhere in the world and of course part of that in no small way has been this tremendously important uh, instagram account at women street photographers which has created an enormous following and it's been very successful hasn't it i think so i mean we uh right now we have over a hundred four thousand followers yeah nice. uh, which is incredible yeah. in uh, such a short time and you know i i created this instagram account as a a personal catalog at first, you know, after Trump was elected in uh, here in the United States and with all the sexism and racism just blew up dramatically, mm. it really um, forced me to to think about how can I amplify voice of female artists. And when I started looking, uh, you know, I had this idea for a group exhibition and I secured the space and I started researching who are uh, women's street photographers because frankly I didn't know anyone I mean I knew a, a few but they were already you know they passed away or but I didn't know any contemporary female street photographer so when I began researching uh, it was it was really hard to find them on Instagram so that's why I started the Instagram account women's street photographer 
as my personal catalog. I'm like, okay, I'm going to have them all in one place. <laughs> so I start saving them and uh, those uh, posts. And then I start posting those photographs. Uh, then I thought, well, I need to provide value to uh, followers. So uh, I started writing, you know, why I like this photo. Then I thought I need to start doing like uh, live Instagram lives because I wanted my followers to know who, who was behind women's street photographers. Uh, you know, someone who is experienced as a, you know, photojournalism and documentary photographer and yeah. photo editor. And yeah. I mean, I did it all. So I want people to trust me to see um, who is behind uh, uh, women's street photographers. Now I do, I've done over 50 Instagram uh, lives with uh, other female photographers. Uh, I do it almost uh, weekly and uh, I interview women who are up and coming or who publish their books. I'm very interested um, to interview those women. I do want to talk a little bit about your photography. Um, I, know, I know that you are but one name uh, of the hundred that are in there, but I, I want to actually rewind a bit to um, a story which was 9-11, uh, which you feature on your website um, with, with um, some quite incredible pictures from that day. American 11, are you trying to call? Nobody moved. Everything was okay. Unconfirmed report that a plane has crashed into one of the towers there. We are efforting more information on this subject. You were five blocks away. You were living in New York by then when the, the first plane struck the World Trade Center 9-11. The, the sirens woke you and you, you instinctively became part of the story with your camera. What do you, re what do you remember of, of the day? Oh, my, uh, everything. Um, as you mentioned, I lived, uh, I believe, four blocks away from the World Trade Center. Four, okay. And at the time, I, uh, I was working at the Associated Press. And uh, where, you know, I lived, I used to live by the police plaza and uh, five, uh, five firefighters house and the hospital. So I woke up from the, all the sirens and I turned this, uh, the news um, on television. And I see in the television as a, a, a second plane hit the second building mm. and I hear it at the same time because I was so close, close to the World Trade Center. Yeah. So I immediately knew it, it was not an accident and I um, grabbed my fam uh, camera uh, and my film. And I remember just running around the apartment thinking, do I need a flash? But it's like nine in the morning and it's nice and bright. I'm like, no, I don't need a flash. And I was there like almost immediately after the second plane hit. Mm -hmm. And yeah, it was it was very surreal. I didn't know what kind, like how big the planes were. Uh, I didn't know those details at all. No. And I remember I even walked into the World Trade Center and then I walked out because I wanted to keep uh, the burning towers in my view. Yeah. And when you're standing under the World Trade Center, I mean, they were so tall, all I could see like a little fire. So I didn't even realize the magnitude of it. And then I positioned myself in this triage uh, area where they were bringing injured people. So yeah, I mean, it was it, it was horrific. I mean, seeing people jumping from the building to me, it was haunting for many, many, many years. Um, I'm, I'm a very visual person, and I, you know, exactly a year before I was. Uh, on top of the World Trade Center in the observation deck. Mm -hmm. And I went there for a reason because I wanted to do a skydiving and I thought, let me see, you know, how, uh, how I felt. And it was, it was so high and it was so scary yeah. that I changed my mind to do the skydiving. So seeing those people jumping, it was just, I could just imagine like how horrific it must yeah. be that they chose to to walk out of window I know. and jump 
I, I want to read your account and share the picture of the tower literally buckled in two. Now, I've seen plenty of pictures of the towers coming down, but nothing like your photograph, and I genuinely mean that. Um, you feel to me like you are literally under it, and, and your words support it. I lifted my camera and took one shot before I saw in my viewfinder that the building was coming down. Somebody said, run, and I started running. I was certain it was coming right on me. I kept thinking it's not happening to me. When it hit the ground, I fell. I thought, I'm going to die now because people will just run over me. But nobody did. I looked back and I, I saw this unbelievable huge cloud of dust and debris coming right at me. And I hid behind a car. I, I know it seems an odd question, but how long did you remain behind that car? People talk about hiding that day and, and finding it very difficult to crawl out from their hiding places. I don't remember how long I was uh, there. So when the uh, when the building collapsed, I I thought I I I died. You know, I mean, I it was so dark. I was out of air. I mean, I I, I didn't think I died. I thought I was buried alive mm. because I opened my eyes. I couldn't see. It was so dark, and I couldn't hear anything because the 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 explosion was so loud. I mean, now looking, you know, looking back and watching some videos, I was just lost hearing. You know, I was out of my breath because I, it was the air was so thick. Yeah. So I began like choking. And what snapped me out of it was somebody else was hiding behind the same car. So his question, he asked me, like, are you OK? And, you know, I was wearing a T-shirt with the American flag. You know, this is the first thing I grabbed when I... Yeah run out. I didn't even realize until I take, took a self-portrait in a, yeah. a mirror. But I put the t-shirt over my face and I caught myself, it's funny, but I caught myself like, oh, somebody's going to see my bra. No, it's not. No, nobody's going to see my bra because it's dark. I mean, it's like, it's funny, the, those thoughts going through your mind, which is like, really? Yeah. And then when somebody's asked me, like, are you okay? Because I was like, literally choking. Yeah. You know, I was like, out of breath. And I'm like, no, I'm not okay. I said no, I'm not okay. I, I'm, I'm I'm pregnant, and then that that thought also snapped me out. Like, what am I doing here? I need to like anyway. I I, I just and then I start seeing like silhouettes mm. and blinking lights. That's the first thing I start seeing: blinking lights. The, emer the emergency, emergency vehicles. Yeah. Yes, emergency vehicles, and and then I start taking pictures again, uh, which. Some of the photographs I don't even remember taking. I was just in such a shock. And then I just started walking home because I, I, I needed to be home in, in, in my safety place. But as soon as I got home, I started mixing chemicals, you know, the developer and the fixer, because I knew uh, AP didn't have the ability to develop those films. So in the bathroom, I developed a uh, film. And I shot two rolls of black and white and one roll of color, which oh, yeah. I almost developed as black and white. Oh. I oh, my word. don't know why, how I got this roll of color film in my, in my bag. But I, I guess I was in that state of mind because the canisters, the film canister was different color. Yeah. It was a yellow. So I'm like, oh, wow, color. And so I developed my film and I start... Uh, uh, walking to AP office with my tank, with a wet film in the tank. I was walking because I, I didn't want to, like, wait until it dries out. No. I, I wanted to, like, I figured that I by the time I get to the office, it will dry. And just to rewind quickly, there's a port self-portrait that you mentioned in the bathroom before you get the pictures to AP. It shows you there was debris in your hair, the uh, the T-shirt that you were talking about with your Stars and Stripes is, is, is on the front. It's an interesting self-portrait made during moments of complete chaos, isn't it? Yes, I just wanted to remember how I looked, you know, with the bleeding elbow and, yeah. um, you know, me all covered in dust and debris. And yeah. you still see my keys, uh, my house, my apartment keys in my hand. Yeah. yeah, I just wanted to, it was my first, like, as soon as I walked into the home, I, I took that picture. Well, it was an incredible body of work, which, of course, resulted in a 
a World Press Photo Award for you under difficult circumstances working alongside many other brave and important storytellers on that um, dreadful day. Let's draw it back to the book, Women Street Photographers, as we close. Uh, Now, you have liberty where you live now to make pictures of what you want, when you want, however often you want. It's not like that for every photographer in the in the book. Even some European countries now, actually, where making pictures on the street is is frowned upon. What what do you see as the um, the future of uh, street photography? Mm. <laughs> well, I'm not a, a fortune teller, but I hope I hope uh, people view street photography as something uh, fun and something that they can do. Uh, you know, anyone, anyone can do street photography. Yeah. And, and that's, that's what I wanted to show with this book, that you can uh, be creative mm. regardless where you live, regardless of what camera you have. You can do this with your phone. A lot of those photographs in the book done by phone. Are they? Yes. Interesting. Yes. And, um, you know, we have it in our own hands to curate our nar- narrative. Mm. You know, now you can uh, create, the, be on social media and give yourself the, 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 ex- the needed exposure. You can connect with anyone in the world through social media. I'm a big fan of Instagram. Because of Instagram, I met so many great friends because of instagram i got this book because of instagram uh we already curated 15 exhibitions around the world last year alone uh we curated five exhibitions even during even during the pandemic yes wow three in person and two online anything is possible it's all in your hand it's all in our hand to do what what we need to do well, well, just finally, I'd imagine there have been a number of photographers who proposed their own or others' inclusion in a follow-up. Is it too early for me to say, when's part two coming? <laughs> uh, soon. <laughs> soon. I, I am, uh, uh, there are so many um, projects that we're working on. Uh, one of them, a, a, a magazine. Uh, we've been working on it for several months now. And the books, uh, part two, yes, I'm thinking about a couple more books right now. Uh, there are going to be more artist residencies, uh, not only in New York, but in Europe and Asia. Um, the genie is out of the bottle, and there's just so many projects. Uh, so stay tuned. My thanks to Galnada Samoilova. And that's it for today. Keep sending your questions, feedback and photo stories to studio at photographydaily.show so that I can feature you in the mailbag edition, which is the Friday Photo Walk. On that note, remember, you can also send in pictures from your own photo walks to appear on the episode's show page online with links to your website or Instagram. Music on the show was from the incredible artlist.io and I look forward to photographing with you hearing from you and talking with you on Friday. Photography Daily is a Loading Zone production.